Welcome to Monday, October 10th, 2022. Your day with the podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com or on their Facebook page. As we start off the new week, it's basically going to be a continuation of what we had over the weekend. So it's a good looking Monday coming on up. We have this cold front coming that's going to give us a glancing blow. But we talked about the battle of the computer models last week. Was it going to be a big bad front or just a glancing blow? Well, it's going to be just a glancing blow as it looks like the GFS, the American model, actually won out on this one. While the European and the Canadian were not correct with the front. This means the worst weather is going to stay to our east, more towards the upper Great Lakes and then eventually into the northeastern United States where, you know, they could have some pretty significant October cold coming. That might make some news. While out west, we're going to have typical October weather through the weekend, which means, you know, our nice weather this fall has been, well, nice. It's been a pretty nice fall and it's going to continue even with this cold front coming on through. But the northern hemisphere pattern is changing. Our luck is going to run out, likely after the 20th or so. And we'll talk about that and we'll tell you why we think our luck will eventually run out on this fall season. Got some great photos in over the weekend from all around the western United States. Just great shots and great colors. There's also a moose theme to the fall color photos this morning. A moose in the Medicine Bow National Forest there checking out the colors. I guess the moose like to check out those colors as well. Great shot out of Casper Mountain. Etna, Wyoming, just wow, look at those nice wispy cirrus clouds, the blue sky, and the changing colors there. Beautiful shot there out of uh, West Ten Sleep Creek. And then from the Bighorn Mountains, this is on Friday, when that cold front came in and brought upslope up against the high plains and mountains, you could actually get above those low stratus clouds as the Bighorn stood out like an island late last week. Then talk about a moose theme. That is just an incredible shot there from Bob Settles from Jackson. Nice shot of the moose getting over the fence. Looks like steeplechase with the moose. Don't forget to send your photos to podcast at dayweather.com. Today's satellite photo shows two things. The first thing it shows is all the clear weather in the Intermountain West right here. Just really nice weather under a big area of high pressure. And that's just going to give us a really nice day again with some nice weather conditions. But up here, see that swirl of clouds right there? That is where we have that next low up in northern sections coming in into northern Saskatchewan and Alberta and British Columbia over the next two or three days. It's going to come in just like that. And you can see it on the 500 millibar chart up here in the Northwest Territories. The high is building in the Gulf of Alaska, so that's going to send this southeast. But it's not going to dig like this into the Great Basin like it sometimes they do that, but it's going to go more towards the Midwest. And there you can see it. This is by noon, mountain time tomorrow. We'll have a cold front sweeping through. And it is going to bring wind. That's one thing to be ready for. It is going to get windy later today, Tuesday, and into early Wednesday, especially in the wind-prone areas of Montana and Wyoming and parts of northern Colorado as well. And then the West Dakotas, western areas of Nebraska. It is going to be a little windy. It's just that time of year where we're going to start talking about the wind some more. But the worst weather is directed into the upper plains in the Midwest. This is by tomorrow afternoon and evening. You can see the colder weather here behind the front, but it's not dramatic. It's not a big dramatic swing in temperatures as the colder air will filter into areas more to the east. There will be showers, especially in Montana with this, getting up into the northern counties of Wyoming, but lighter amounts elsewhere. The front's just moving too fast to be a big moisture producer. And here's the snow. The snowfall total is not impressive, though it does look like the Bighorns and the Beartooths in the Montana mountains will see some snow a little bit. Snow showers or flurries in the higher mountains of Colorado, even back into the Sierra Nevada here. Going forward into the end of the week, this is for Thursday evening. Notice we've got a deep trough coalescing here into the Great Lakes. This is where the cold is. This is where it's going to be quite cold for this time of year. Even into upper Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Great Lakes, going to see some pretty cold air get pumped into the system, but it stays just to the east of the Continental Divide here. This upper level low probably not going to be producing much weather in California. These are the temperature anomalies by Thursday evening. So you can see the colder weather is headed to the Midwest 
and the Great Lakes, while the warmer temperatures are west of the Continental Divide. By next Monday, notice the pattern really gets amplified. If we were to draw the jet stream, notice it's getting really wavy here. These are the changes I'm talking about in the Northern Hemisphere. We're getting more waves. The higher the number of waves or troughs and ridges, the more unsettled the weather pattern is going to be and the more changeable changeable it's going to be. Also, when you get these pattern changes where there's more waves, there's more displacement of cold to the south and warm to the north. So this is where you start to get the extremes of the change in seasons starting to take place. But out west here, we've got this little low coming into Washington, Oregon, and this low in Arizona, but they're not going to be big weather producers. But this amplification of the jet stream is going to cause some displacements of cold air. Now, this is by next Monday. Look at the Great Lakes. Look at the east. Look at into the Appalachians. There's some cold temperatures. These are the anomalies. So these are 20 to 30 degrees below the seasonal normals or the 30-year averages. And you can see it's mostly along and east of the Continental Divide there. But the coldest of cold is to our east. Things change. This is by Saturday, the 22nd. Two things are going on here. We've got high pressure building up into the Eastern Pacific. We've got high pressure in the Atlantic, sort of creating a bowl with the jet stream. And if this happens, well, the door opens to Canada right here. This is a wedge of some really cold air building out of the Northwest Territories if this comes together. Now, there is some support for this, and I do think this is when we will see in the Rockies the bigger shot of colder, wet weather that we've really been waiting for and haven't seen yet. It's likely going to be around or after the 20th, 22nd, 23rd or so. And if you look at the Northern Hemisphere from where we are today, what I want you to do is pay attention to the blue areas here. This is where the air is what we would consider to be pretty cold. So you can see that is expanding. It's covering a good part of Greenland, the North Pole, back into Siberia, parts of Eastern Europe. But look at North America here on our end. Our end of North America is pretty warm right now relative to where we are in the month. But as we go forward to 14 days from now, going out two weeks, see the expansion, see how it grows. And also it's wavy. There's lots of waves here with the jet stream and in these waves is when you get the big north-south pushes of the colder weather. So it looks like a big amoeba, but those amoebas is what sends those colder waves further south off the polar regions. So that's why as we get into the end of the month, after the 20th, things will change. Supporting that as well, and we've talked about this before, the sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Pacific are warmer than the 30-year average. This favors the high pressure ridge that we just showed you here off the eastern coast, off the west coast of North America. That is what helps displace the colder air south. 